Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is part one of the new series between me and Steve from Tronics Fix. So Steve is based in the US and he's a professional. I'm based in the UK and I'm an amateur. So basically it's my mate Vince, the amateur from the UK versus Steve, the professional from the US. So it's uh, a battle across the seas, UK versus US, and it's a battle between the amateurs and the professionals to see who's going to make the most amount of percentage profit, and that's where this series is different than our last one. So in October we had a challenge, and whoever made the most amount of money won the challenge, and unfortunately for me, Steve won, and he won quite convincingly. So it was a lose for the UK, but it was a win for the United States. So in this series, what we're doing is a few things are going to be different. Steve is used to fixing modern games consoles. That's what he does. So it was kind of more in his favour in the last series because he was doing what he does every day of the week. So to make it harder, this new series, it has to be toys before the 1980s. So you can buy any toy you want. It has to be before the 1980s. The other rules are very similar. We have to buy and sell on eBay, so we can't go down the road and buy from a charity shop or a car boot sale. It has to be bought and sold on eBay. And also, we're going to start with 150 UK pounds, which is 200 US dollars. So we can buy anything we want with that 150 UK pounds. And then whoever makes the most amount of percentage profit wins. So not money. Last time it was done purely on money and that favoured more expensive items because if you're buying something for £200 and you make, for example, you know, £30 profit on it, then really there's not much of a percentage increase there, but £30 is quite a bit of money. So what we're doing this time is, is percentage profit wins. So if you buy something for £5 and then sell it for £10, you've made 100%. Obviously, it's much more difficult than that because you're going to buy it possibly for £5. You might have to spend maybe uh, £10 on spares and you might have to spend £5 on the eBay and PayPal fees, etc. So that would be £20 in total. And then you sell it for £30. That's going to be a 50% increase because your costs are £20 and you sold it for 30 So you've made £10 on your £20 investment, which is a 50% increase. So you can see that in this series it could actually pay to buy cheaper items because maybe there may be more chance of doing a percentage increase on a cheaper item. If I buy something for £100 and sell it for £150, forget about fees and stuff, let's say it's an ideal world where there's no fees or no costs, buy it for 100 don't have to spend anything on it to fix it and sell it for 150 well then you've made £50 profit but you've actually only made 50% percentage increase so you might be better off buying something for two or three pound and you might be able to make two or three hundred percent percentage increase so basically they're the rules and the other difference is is that this is going to be put live in the month of february but right now this is january so we're not trying to cram it all into having to buy and sell in one month because on the last series it was really hard to buy and sell five items and get it all done in one month so what we're doing is now we're giving ourselves a little bit more time and although this is filmed in january you're not actually seeing this until February. So this is my first item here. Let's open it up and show you what I bought. Now it is actually quite hard to find toys that are broken before the 1980s. So there wasn't that many, not that many electro, uh, electronic toys. So a lot of them are going to be mechanical. And uh, yeah, they're quite expensive for what they are because obviously there's kind of like nostalgia and stuff comes into it and a lot of people want to relive their youth by buying the older toys so you find that a lot of them are expensive now look at this marks motorway made by lewis marks and co swansea so it looks like it's uh, from wales and it says uh, marks motorway and too fast long running car so as far as i know these are clockwork these are wind up and then they're supposed to whiz around the track here. So before, shall I open it? Yeah, I'll open it up and then I'll show you what I paid for it. So let's have a quick look around the box to begin with. It's nice that it's in its box. Now, I don't actually know the date of this one. I'll have to do a little bit more research in, into this when I, uh, when I start trying to fix it. But here we go. So it's like a plastic, not very nice track. And we've got some, oh wow. We've got some cars in here, some broken up cars with 
that looks like the, the mainspring has definitely become unwound. So this is definitely going to be a, it won't be an electronic one, that's for sure. It's all going to be clockwork, but it's going to be quite interesting. Or maybe they're not unwound. I don't know. I don't know. I've never had one of these. I've never seen one of these before. Never played with one before. It looks like originally there would have been paint or something on here, or stickers maybe. Maybe, yeah, these feel like there would have been... I'm thinking there would have been stickers on here at some stage. Let's have a look at this one here. Oh no, maybe not. There we go, I'm wrong. Paint. So it looks like that silver spray paint looks like a sticker's missing from there. I don't know whether originally they would have had stickers on or whether they uh, have been put on throughout the years. This is the hole for the key. So it looks like the slot goes through here at the back. That clips onto there. Does it clip onto there? No, it doesn't. So these are fully unwound themselves, so I'm hoping I'll be able to wind them up again. Looks like we've got some parts here. Ah, the bottom of these are just plastic. Oh, that's a bit weak, isn't it? In fact, that's broken at the back as well. Right, these might not necessarily be repairable. Let's have a look what we've got here. So we've got the remains. We've got a sticker here, so it looks like the number seven sticker is still here. So I'm going to have to try to clean that up and reattach that. We got the key here for the winding up. Oh, well, it looks like it's working. And that must be just to stop it. Oh, it's just very crude. Look at that. You just put that there to stop it. And then... Uh... Oh, it's good that we got the key. Does that stop it? Not really. No, not when it's powerful. I think maybe that should be at this end here, stopping it on here, because it looks like this gear has got part of it missing, perhaps to, uh, perhaps this should be that side, like that, maybe, and then release it. I don't know, I'm going to have to look into that more. But the wheels are definitely going round. Yeah, okay, well, it's certainly going, and it is actually going for quite a long time, it's nice seeing all those gears moving. So it's going from very fast to slow. So it's taking, the reason it looks like it's geared down is because otherwise these wheels would just spin too fast and it would be over in a couple of seconds. So they're making it gear very slowly to begin with and it's getting faster and faster so it can last a long amount of time. And it really is lasting a long amount of time, look at that, and it wasn't even fully wound. Do you know what, I think this one might be quite an interesting one. Shame that these are made out of plastic. I thought these were going to be metal. But then again, I suppose if it's plastic, there's more chance of me being able to being able to kind of you know glue it back together, super glue it back together. So we're going to have to find out what's going on, what's going on here. And this looks like it's just all tracks. So I'm hoping all the tracks here, looks like the two big bits are together anyway, and they're just going to clip into each other like so. So I think the thing to do to begin with is try to get the cars working and then after that put the order track together and it should make a figure of eight track like that. And then I'll have to do a little bit of research to find out how old this is. It says made in Great Britain, Mark's Toys. So this is definitely before my era. But I'm not sure how old this would be. I'm thinking, looking at the box and stuff there, I mean I really haven't got a clue. I'm thinking possibly... I should be able to date it from the car, shouldn't I? But unfortunately, I don't know these cars. I'm thinking maybe 19... 1950s or 60s? Maybe more like 1950s. I'm not too sure, but that shouldn't be too, that shouldn't be too hard to find out. Right, OK, so this one here does look in pretty good nick. Again, I'm wondering why this is kind of bent to that side there, because when we wind this up, that's not going to be enough to stop it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cover on this one. So let's wind this one up. Right, let's put this on here because normally this would be on all the time. So that goes in the front there. That has to clip into there. Okay, so that clips in quite nice. But now look, they're not... Okay, so look, the wheels are foul in the body. Can you see that they're not wanting to go around because the wheels are bent? So we're going to have to bend the wheels back into place. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, see, the problem is at the back here, we've got a lot of movement. So it should be like... 
I'm not sure which one goes at the back. I'll have to I'll have to work it out. Maybe this is the one for here. And then by having this in here, it should keep the wheels more in the central position rather than moving left and right because of this tab down here. So it looks like we're going to have to do a fair bit of gluing. It's got a nice little embossed symbol there. M-A-R with an X, a mark, so that's obviously the symbol of them. Just wondering if it's possible to take apart and clean or am I wasting my time on it? Because there's not going to be any oil on them anyway. I suppose I'm wasting my time. I might as well just clean that out with a toothbrush and some IPA just to get all the hairs and stuff out of it. You can see there's a lot of build-up of hairs around the place. Yeah, so right now I am quite hopeful that I will be able to hopefully get this together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mat out and then I need to get some glue and I need to try to glue these back together and I think I'm going to clean it all up to begin with. I'll just be fast forwarding through that because there's going to be nothing interesting there. And then using glue, getting it all together. Really, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount to fix, which might be a bit of a result. The problem is I'm not sure how well this is going to glue together. I'm wondering whether you can actually buy the basis for these online, you know, whether you can get second-hand cars or not. It might be worth me looking into that. I'm also going to clean up the cars as well. Because they look a little bit on the dirty side. Well, so let's get set up. Okay, I forgot to show you how much I paid for it. So if you have a look here, I paid £15.395 postage. So that's £18.95. In total, it came with a few pictures. It just says vintage Louis Marks motorway track and two fast long running cars boxed. And then it says here rare box Marks toy car motorway track. Cars need some attention. Yeah, that's right, they do. And I don't know how to put them together. Right, okay, well, obviously glue is needed. So, uh, yeah, that's it there. A few pictures. And it is the one that they sent me. Right, so let's clean these things up and see what's happening with them. Okay, so what I'm thinking is needed is uh, basically just gluing them together. But what I want to make sure is, because they, they could be, you can see there's hairs and stuff caught around here. And maybe if there's dirt and stuff, it might be adding to the friction. So what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that it can climb this hill. Because obviously, obviously we can see that the cars are working, not when the body works on them, but that's to do with... Uh, that's to do with just the fact that it's wobbling around in here. I'm sure when I glue it all together that that will be fine. And having a close look at it here, I can see that there's a little bit coming down here and there's marks on the teeth here. So when I bent it earlier, that's incorrect. It is supposed to grip onto that gear there. And then you can see when it's properly gripped on, it stops it from moving round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it up fully and I'm going to put it here and I want to see if it's able to climb over this hill. Because if it isn't, then we're going to have a problem. In fact, it should be when it's not wound. Well, actually, let's wind it fully and see. OK, so that's fully wound now. I can feel that there's a lot of tension there. Let's see if it's strong enough to climb up this hill. No. And that's when it's fully wound. So the more it unwinds, the weaker it's going to get. Right, okay. I wonder if it, ha if it had a run-up, though, would it be able to do it? So it looks like it's going to come round the bends. Let's move this box out of the way. Let's see if it does it now. Remember, there's no body on it, so it's going to be even heavier. Okay, yeah, that goes. Yeah, so let's unwind it a bit more. Let's try the other leg. So it's struggling a bit. It's like it's bottoming him, bottom him out there. It's not... Uh, that was because it was grounding itself. Yeah, again, that's just because it's not on it centrally. I think it is going to work. Yeah, OK. Now, I'm thinking it would always have trouble. Even if it was new, I'm sure it wouldn't go right the way to the very end because as it winds down, it's definitely going to be getting weaker. Like that. 
yeah. Right, okay, so to begin with, I'm going to get a needle, I'm going to get some IPA, and I'm going to give everything a really good clean in here and a toothbrush to try and get all the bits out. I'm also going to undo it from the, the plastic case as well, so I'm going to get some pliers and open it up there to uh, so I can work on it underneath and get to all the bits and bobs. Try to bend these up here. Do you know what? I think with the age of the toy, I would have thought that it would have come with a, you know, some sort of metal galvanized type base. You know, the same with the little matchbox cars that you get. I thought it would have come with one of them rather than the whole thing being plastic. And if it was a metal one, it still would be working now because the body's okay. But to have the base made out of plastic as well is not the uh, not the best. I'm thinking if you were to get an older one of these, I'm sure I've seen these in tin plate. So the whole track and everything would be metal. And in hindsight, it might have been nicer to get one of them. Right, I'm going to clean everything now with IPA. I'm just going to be fast forwarding through this, but I'm going to be using a needle to get all the, the hair and stuff away from the axle. I'm also going to get a bowl of water because I'm not sure if the IPA will react with the plastic or not. I know it's going to be fine on the metal, but I'm not 100% sure about the plastic. And especially because it's old, I'm going to get some water so I can give it a good rinse off. Now I'm going to get the hairdryer on all the plastic bits because although they're plastic there is still an axle running through here and I don't want that to get any bit rusty. So I'm going to dry this all off now with the hairdryer. Okay so they're all nice and dry now and uh, relatively clean so let's start working on these things here. Okay, so looking at it here, I understand that this is the mainspring here. You wind this up to put energy into it. I get that. And then onto the mainspring, you've got this gear here, which is, uh, you know, to turn the spring, essentially, the, the motion of the spring into a gear. I get that. And then we're having to gear it down. So basically, the wheels move quick in, uh, well, you're having to slow it down, aren't you? So it just doesn't lose all its energy within three or four seconds, because if none of these gears were on it, when you wind this up, this would just kind of explode back out again. So uh, I understand the fact about gearing it down, but you can see it goes from here to here, and then from there to this one here but why have we got this weight on this one here why have we got this kind of off-centered weight on this one I don't get I don't get why you need that why would it make any difference is it to help it is it to help it round but then again all the energy is coming from here anyway so is that actually going to make a difference. I can understand that this might give it one extra little turn at the very end and it's on both of them as well so it's not a broken, it's not that this is broken and I can understand if this was to hit that but it doesn't. This thing here closes on the actual gears themselves so I don't know why you've got a weight. It sort of jumps around, look, can you see it goes from slow to quick I don't get that. Can you see when it gets to the top, the weight takes it straight down? Maybe it's to maybe it's just to help it all move along because then not only is this giving it energy, but when that goes to the top, it's the weights taking it back down again. But you think the energy would be cancelled out by the extra weight off it lifting up? I don't I don't quite understand that one. Anyway, back to the cleaning. See, all this hair here could end up slowing it up. See all this, probably from where it's been run on the carpet, or just dust just gets into it and then winds it, winds its, uh, just winds around all the, the cogs and the axles and everything. Look at that. OK, 
Okay, so that's the clockwork bit of them cleaned up, and I'm happy with how they've come out. I'm not going to add grease to them, because I don't believe they would have been greased when they were new. I think that if I was to grease it, it's just going to pick up grit and dirt. So I think I'm just going to leave them as they are. You can see that I've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of years of grime and also hair and stuff out of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these bodies here and I'm going to give these a clean. I'm just going to use a wet wipe and then a bit of kitchen towel just to clean them up. And uh, I just need to take a bit of care around these stickers because obviously that sticker will come off really easily. I'm not going to be able to get them clean again. But I just want to get the rest of the bodywork clean. OK, so the cars came up lovely and clean. The other number fell off, but that's not a problem because I can just use a bit of double-sided sticky tape for them. Now, these are going to let it down because originally I, I'm thinking that these would have been pure white. But uh, I'm going to put them back on because it shows the age of it. I don't want to print some new ones off the internet and have everything look immaculate when I've got the choice to use the original. But what I am going to do is, if you have a look at the spray paint here, I know it's not a good finish, but it is definitely still intact. So there's a few scratches on it, but it looks nearly perfect. But on this one, it's uh, mostly missing. When I was cleaning it, bits of bits, a few more bits were coming off. So I think what I am going to do is I am going to spray the new windows on it because I do have some silver paint here. This is from an old Rover from years ago. I'm hoping it's going to be okay. If not, what I can always do is, as long as I get a pool of silver in there, I can, because the nozzle might be all blocked up, I can just paint it on with a paintbrush. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark it off with some frog tape. So this is just some tape I have left over from doing the decorating. And the idea is that you get a nice clean line on this. So I'm hoping when I put it on the plastic that I'll uh, be able to get an okay finish with it. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. Then once I've done all that, I need to glue all this together. Now really I should be doing this at the beginning, but I'm pretty confident that I am gonna be able to glue this and get them to work. It's gonna look a mess and it's not gonna look anything like they were when they were new but I still think it will work. So that's why I'm just doing the other bits first. Okay, so that's all masked off now. I'm not sure how well it's gonna come out, but yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect anyway because the actual professional one isn't perfect. Okay, apologies for the light. I'm outside and it's dark, but let's uh, see if this is going to spray. No, it's not. The nozzle's all blocked up. So I'm going to have to paint it on. I'm going to have to try to get the spray out there. And I'm going to have to paint it on with a paintbrush. might do it so I'm gonna let it dry and see what it comes out like okay so about an hour's passed now and it feels dry so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna handle it too much but I'm gonna take all the tape off and see if it's come out any bit good or whether it's awful definitely got leakage anyway I might be able to clean it up there Right, okay, it uh, is <laughs> not very good. But you know, it might be better than it was before. I need to clean up. I do need to try and scrape some of this off because it's, yeah, it doesn't look good. Right, I'm gonna try to get something blunt, like a blunt knife, just to see if I can scrape that away. To be fair though, it probably does look better than it did before, even with the paint that's seeped through. Actually, I'm just going to use my nail because it seems to be scraping off just by using my nail and then that way there's less chance of me damaging the plastic by scraping it. Right, okay, so it looks a little bit better but there's still a lot of leakage around the place and when I was scraping it I'm starting to scrape the paint off here again but I think from a distance it looks better than it did before you see 
and the original one is far from perfect anyway can you see there's a lot of gaps around the place and I'm thinking that that is the original paint job on it so uh, yeah I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave it like that if I get it working really well I might give it another give it another 10 minutes or so just to try and get off any remaining bits but I think it looks okay Right, let's concentrate now on the base here and get it all glued together. I think I'm going to use super glue to do the gluing on this bit here and, for example, in all the cracks. And then I think I'm going to put a bead of plastic weld on over it, this UV glue. And I'm thinking between the two of them, hopefully, it will make a, a strong enough connection. Right, so just to finish off the bodies, I'm just going to put the stickers back on. I'm going to use some double-sided sticky tape on here. Okay, so there they are, numbers back on now. Let's try to glue these bodies back together. First of all, we need to find out if we have all the bits. So Right, excellent. So that's that one there, so that should be repairable. And that's that one there, so it looks like they will be repairable. So that was a normal 20 minute battle with super glue. For some reason, whenever I use super glue, what it wants to do is stick my fingers together or stick my fingers to the item. It never seems to want to actually stick the items that I want to stick together together. So, uh, yeah, this isn't going to, I can tell this isn't going to hold at all. But uh, this one doesn't look too bad, so I'm hoping that the plastic weld will basically get it all, all together. I just want to get the kind of basic shape with this to begin with. Right, so I'm going to let that dry for a while and then uh, do the UV glue. Right, so I'm going to use this now. So with this, all you need to do is put a thin bead on it and then shine the light on it for, it says a three second rapid repair, but I normally hold it on there for about 10 seconds on each of them. Right, okay, so I'm not going to put too much pressure on it, but it's certainly holding I'm not going to bend it and flex it around the place but I think it's okay I'm now going to put another bead on it over it again to hopefully give it some extra strength strengthen up nicely now I'm going to give it another go everywhere and hopefully by doubling up it will give it that extra bit of strength Okay, so they are now glued and plastic welded up. So yes, it doesn't look pretty, but the main thing is I want it to be strong. I don't want it to fall apart as soon as I wind them up. So I'm going to now just reassemble them all, and hopefully we will have enough track to actually make the circuit. I haven't checked the track yet, so uh, we might be stuffed if there's not enough track to actually make what we're supposed to be able to make, which is this kind of figure of eight thing here. Okay, so that fits in there nice. I can't remember which they were they were bent, but I'm bending them outside purely because I know originally they probably were inside, but a lot of the plastic's broken here and a bit of the plastic's broken there, so I'm bending them the opposite way than what they probably were originally. 
Actually, that's gone on really nice, really strong. Look at that. Not wobbling at all. Let's try to get the body work on. Well, I'm pretty pleased with that. I mean, the body you can see is bent down here and here, but although the wheels are sunk a lot into it up here, I think, I think it might work. Yeah, that might be okay. I'm not sure whether it's going to get up the hill or not. I won't know until I set it up and find out. Also, I can see that this is slightly, the keyhole is slightly out of line here. So I won't worry about that just yet. I'm going to do this one next, and then I'll come back to that depending on what this one is like. And that's that one again the wheels are sunk up into it this one doesn't stick down here quite so much they are turning keyhole's not aligned in the center though it's still off i wonder is that something i've done or is it just the way it is I think I'm going to leave it because I mean if you put the key in there it does do what it's supposed to do and I don't know how they were lined up originally. Good thing is it definitely feels nice and strong. I mean I could really strengthen it up if I was just to put plastic weld along the edges here and then get the bodywork fully on it but the worry about that is it wasn't designed like that. Yeah both wheels are definitely sunk into it. Do you know what? I think I'm going to run with that. I mean, they certainly look a lot better than they did before. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down to the kitchen and I'm going to set up all that track and then uh, see if we've got all the right bits and then see, more importantly, if this actually works or not. And there's bits of sellotape coming off the box. I think I'm going to just put a fresh little bit of sellotape on each corner because all this stuff is, uh, you can see, it's just coming straight off. Okay, so that's the corners of the box all fixed up again. And now it opens nice and snugly. Right, let's set this up in the kitchen. Okay, so I've boxed it all up now, so it's going to be the same as a kid opening this in the 1960s. So that's when this is from. And I've uh, had a look at the cars, and it looks like it's a Vauxhall Victor Estate, which came out in 1958. Here's a picture of one. As you can see, they do look pretty similar, don't they? Either that, or it could be pure coincidence, and it might be based on an American car, because Marks 
is an American brand, but they also had a factory in the UK in Swansea that used to supply the UK. So let's set this up now, and I'm hoping that we're going to have enough track. I put it all back in the box, and it looks like the box is, uh, it looks complete. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't look like there's anything missing. I've had a look on eBay and I'll show you that at the end of the video, but basically the proper sets come with a box for each of the cars as well. So really that's the only thing that's missing and as well obviously these cars are really battered. But the box, the track, all looks to be okay and the artwork and stuff on the box is nice. There's some staining down here, but it looks, it's in okay condition considering the age. So I don't know when this came out in the 1960s but that's when it's from. So obviously you're looking at something now, if we were to say 69, you're looking at something that is 50 years old. And obviously it could be a bit older than that if it was the early 60s when it came yeah. out. Well, right, so let's set this up. So I'm gonna start with the bridge and then work my way around from there. So one of the plastic things is broken here, it should have two, one on each. But as far as I can see, that's the only bit of track that's broken. Right, let me get the camera set up to uh, get the whole track in. Right, okay, so let's wind these cars up and see how they perform. Now I've watched a couple of YouTube videos and basically they all seem to struggle going up the hills and some of them look to be in a lot better condition than mine. I must have watched, there's not that many videos on it, I think I watched three or four and uh, I think on three of them they all struggled. I'm not going to set it off yet, I'm going to put them both on together. Okay, so it won't allow me to wind it anymore once it's gone its full limit. Right, let's go now. Here we go. Right, well, that's really slow. <laughs> oh, that's painfully slow. Right, I thought they'd work better than that. Yeah, we've definitely got a problem here. These are not working as they should. It's like there's no real power there. Let's try it this way around. No, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to take the bodies off. Maybe the bodies are somehow fouling the wheels. Let's put them on the flat and see if they travel. Yeah, not very fast. Let's try this one. Yeah, not great. Okay, let's take the bodies off and see what they do. I've just lost that off it. Uh, where's that spot? Okay, that's supposed to go on the side here, so that's going to need glue in now. Let's give it another wind. No, still no power there. Right, that's definitely not right. Let's try this blue one. No, it's as weak as could be.
Right, okay, I'm gonna have to look into this and find out why it's so why it's so weak. When I took it out of the box to begin with, it was strong enough to go over, it was strong enough to go over the bridge and now it's not. So obviously I've done something to it to make it weaker. Well, the only thing I've done on both of them, because remember, they're both doing exactly the same thing. The only thing I've done is clean them. So, maybe I do need to put oil back in there to lubricate everything up. Maybe that's the difference. Maybe there's more friction created now. Obviously, there was a lot of dirt that came out, but there must have been oil in it as well. So, I'm going to oil it up and then see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I'm going to oil them all up. I'm going to use some watch oil. Then, hopefully, this will be fine enough without causing any problems to it. See if that's going to make any difference. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting quicker. Still not going to be strong enough to gut the hill, but I think it seemed a little bit quicker there. I'm going to keep at that for a bit. Okay, so I've oiled them up fully. I've probably put a bit too much oil in there, but uh, so they're not as nice to touch. They feel a bit oily, but hopefully now they will work. I'm just going to wind them up a little bit so I can put the bodies back on. I had to glue that little bit on as well on that on the other one, you know, the bit that fell off. Got to be gentle with this now. Certainly feels faster. Right, let's give them a full wind up now. Right, so they're both bound full. Let's see if it's going to make it over that bridge. Here we go. And they're off, definitely faster. Look at that! Whoa, they're flying! That red one nearly went off around that corner, nearly toppled. Caught my track breaking. Okay, Lou's got more power. Yeah, there we go. Right, well, you know, that's not too bad, is it? So if it didn't have the bridge, it would definitely go on for longer, because they've still got quite a bit of power in them, just not enough power to get up there. But that's what it said in the YouTube videos, that they do need a helping hand over the bridge. Let's give it another wind up. They actually work a lot better than I thought. I sort of thought to myself, you would kind of feel sorry for a, uh, a child having this in the 1960s. But actually, I think you would get a little bit of fun out of it. And obviously now, the reason that this top body is detachable is so that you can oil it. So, you know, not being used to clockwork toys and stuff, I wasn't really sure. But that must be the reason, that must be the reason why you can take this off. Right, let's have a race. Both. 
hold on down. Just one lap. Two. Three. Blue's definitely got more power. Four. Five. Oh, it went round. Track's about to break. Go on. Ah, okay, so it looks like the blue one. So, uh, so that's why you need two clips. Can you see when it's only the one clip, it tends to come apart there. Well, do you know what? I am pleasantly surprised with that. They've ended up working a lot better than I thought they would. I, I thought they would be a lot slower than that. So, yeah, I, I think if you were to get a couple of sets, maybe two or three sets and make a bigger track, I can see children having fun with this. So, uh, yeah, I, I like that fix. It's a shame the cars are so badly damaged, because if you look at them, you can see here that they don't look good. But the main thing is that they're working. The shame about having the bridge on is that it really limits the amount of time they're gonna work, because now, even when they're almost running out, they would still run on a flat surface. So I think if the bridge wasn't there, I reckon you would get a few more laps on it, you know, if it was the same length, but just in an oval. But I suppose the bridge is the thing that adds fun to it. Right, I just wanna show you something on eBay, because it's quite interesting what I found. So basically, I was looking up the price of these things. Now, I actually didn't do too much research, because for this challenge, I'll be honest with you, I'm finding it hard to get toys before the 1980s that are broken. So remember, I've already done things like the battleships and the big tracks, so I can't really do those again, because it'd be a little bit boring. But uh, if you have a look here, remember I paid, was it £18.50 in total? So we have one here on auction. Now, annoyingly, it hasn't got any bids and it's uh, two days left but with this one it is missing a piece of the track but it has got an extra car but look at the price of some of these now obviously these are much better condition but this is 70 pounds 98 pound interestingly this has a yellow track and again these are these are plastic ones from what i can see again yellow track 75 pounds zero bids 130 pound for this one now i know they're going to be in much better condition than mine i'm not comparing this one here to that but I'm thinking £109, and that's about it. And there's not a huge amount of them for sale either. So I'm thinking that maybe, maybe I might be able to get, I don't know, I, I might be able to get £40 for this. In, in which case, if I do, if I can clear £10 maybe uh, with all the fees and everything, then that would be, well, I'll have to work out what the profit would be. But if I could clear £10, I'm going to be looking at over 50% profit. So you never know, Tronics Fix may be in trouble. Well, so I've been playing this now for the past 20 minutes with my son and we've had to make a few adjustments. So basically, you see these little things at the back here? This is what releases it. They weren't always locking up, they were kicking down because they were a bit loose. So what I had to do is I had to take the body off and I just had to use the pliers just to crush the kind of rivet just a little bit to make it more stiff. And now both of them are working really nice. So as soon as you drop it, it, it goes and it locks again in place. So uh, let's, have a, let's have a race now. My son's just getting a last minute winding in. He's worried that with a couple of revolutions less that he's gonna end up losing. Right, so here we go now. The inside here will be the outside over there, obviously, because it's a figure of eight. On your marks, get set, go. Now you can actually feel the power. There you go, the blue's gone. Blue's gone. <laughs> you can feel the power because uh, they actually wheel spin when they go off at the, at the beginning. So really they could do with slight rubber bands around the tyres. So already now I'm thinking that if you had these in the 60s, you could actually make them so that they work better by putting rubber around the tyres. So it looks like blue. I think you've won that, have you, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have one more race. OK, so this time we're going to be going opposites. And let's do four laps, whoever wins after four laps. Well, actually, yeah, a lap from here. So this is, the, this is going to be the start here, yeah? Is that fair, like that and that? Yeah. Yeah. So, Ben's the blue, I'm the red. On your marks, get set, go. Oh. One lap, but blue's crashed. Blue's crashed again. <laughs> oh, go on, get out of the way. Oh, it's off, it's off, it's off racing around the kitchen. <laughs> right, I think uh, if I can make it over the bridge, yeah, there you go. Red's the winner. There. 
So do you know what? A lot more fun than I thought they would be. I thought they were going to be a bit rubbish, but actually they're okay. That blue one's still raring to go over there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's it. So you're going to see now what I actually sold these for. But for the first part of this series, really happy with this fix. <laughs> you like that? And uh, yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed this one. So hopefully now I can make a profit on it. <laughs> right, I'll see you later. Right, so here we have it back on eBay. Now I've been a bit slow in getting it listed. So at this moment in time, I've still got five days left to run. I took plenty of pictures. I was really honest in the description. Maybe I was a little bit too honest. Maybe people think it's kind of a load of junk when it's really not. I think this is worth every penny of 40 pounds. But at this moment in time, it is going for, are you ready? Da -da! Five pound 50, but we have got five days to go. There's four bids on it. So hopefully I should at least get my money back on this. I think the problem is it's not that it's not good, it's not that it's not worth anything. I think it's just that people, there's not enough people searching for it. I mean, realistically, who's gonna be typing in a Mark's motorway with fast running cars? I just don't think it's gonna be visible to anybody, which is a bit of a shame, but still, you know, as long as I make my money back, as long as I make some profit, I'm going to be happy. And if I do make a loss on it, then hopefully the other items in the competition I will make money on. So you will find out what this actually sold for in the next video. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to both me and Tronics Fix for the rest of this series. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye now.